What do you want to learn more about academic text? Do you want to know the text structure used from various disciplines? Let's find out the details. Hi students, welcome back to our English for Academic and Professional Purposes class. What have you written so far? Have you already started writing a title for your research? Our subject will surely be your guide on how to start your research journey. So learn to love the subject. You have no choice. <laughs> our lesson discussion is still focused on MELC 1 learning competency and our objectives are the following. You're going to define academic text. Second is you're going to determine the text structure of an academic text from various disciplines. Now, what is academic text? Any ideas? It is defined as critical, objective, specialized text written by experts or professionals in a given field using formal language. Take note of the word formal. We discussed that formal language is totally different from daily conversations. We don't use contractions or informal vocabulary. Let's say the word don't. In academic writing, we need to write the two words do not instead of don't. That is contraction. It is objective because it is based on facts and not based on opinions. It is technical because there are words or phrases that we need to use for a specific discipline. For example, when we talk of the word virus, the meaning of virus for TVL, ICT, or information technology students may have a different meaning for STEM or science students. In order to be good in academic writing, you should know the specific styles and structures for your discipline. Academic writing is just like building a house. You need a solid foundation as you make a well-structured house. A well-structured text enables the reader to follow the argument and navigate the text. It means that it is logical and organized. This is more comprehensible if the flow of the text is based on the three-part essay structure. Can you recall the basic three-part structure? They are the introduction, body, and conclusion. The introduction and the conclusion should be shorter than the body of the text. For shorter essays, one or two paragraphs for each of these sections can be appropriate. For longer texts or thesis, they may be several pages long. And in research or dissertation, we have the so-called IMRAD structure. Now let's get to know what IMRAD structure is. I is introduction, M stands for methods, R results, and discussion. Of course, there are other parts of a research paper which you will study further in your practical research subjects. But the basic structure is what we call IMRAD. When we say introduction, what question was asked? Methods, how was it studied? Results, what was found? And discussion, what do the findings mean? I'll show you the parts of IMRAD structure as applied in the thesis format. Take a look. I believe your practical research teachers will discuss in details how to write a research paper based on those formats. I'm just giving you the overview of the IMRAD structure. Since we already finished discussing the structure of academic text, let's proceed to academic discipline. What are some academic disciplines? Can you name? The specific subjects you have in school are just part of the academic discipline in college or university. In senior high, we are into different tracks. Let's get to know them. Are you ready to guess the jumbled words? They are all academic disciplines. First word, I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. Yay, that's business. Second word is one, two, three. Humanities, correct. The third discipline, this is quite difficult. I'll give you three seconds. Wow, you got it. Natural and applied sciences. The last, it consists of two words. One, two, three. Yes, social sciences. Correct. I'll show you the major disciplines and their branches. We have business for ABM students. You belong to the business discipline. We have humanities, the humes or the ham students, the arts and design for TVL can be from engineering discipline or sub-discipline like SMAO, EIM. Mostly they belong to applied sciences. Well, why do we need to know the academic disciplines? 
While we have basic structure of academic writing, yet each academic discipline has its own focus. Learning the conventions and content on each of them will make our writing output more relevant. What are your thoughts after learning the structure of academic text? Did you find them useful? Share your answers in the comment section below. Happy learning and see you! So, so.